this is a swarm up in the Oakland Hills again. This is a swarm right off of Grant Street down here. And then there's the queen bee. There's only one queen in, in the hive. This is a swarm up in the Oakland Hills again. You had a question in the back. What are the most dangerous types of bees? You know, uh, danger really, really matters on whether or not you react to it. So when you get stung by a bee, uh, you, have, you go into anaphylactic shock, and your body really tries to prevent injury, but it really ends up killing you. So it causes your, your airways to close down, and then you suffocate. So, you know, people can be allergic to peanuts, they can be allergic to anything. Oh, uh, allergic. Uh, so it's just an allergic reaction. So, you know, some people react to peanut butter. I don't react to bee stings. Um, that is a queen bee. Um, and these here are all disease cells. So we can talk about disease. What, what causes disease in a bee? Yes? Uh, lack of food, infection. Why don't we just say when somebody's weakened by not eating, starvation. So when you, people are hungry, they, their immune system weakens. So when I see people come into the hospital that haven't been fed or can't eat, you know, their immune system's wiped out. Or let's say they have, they have HIV or other immune suppressing diseases. Then they're prone to disease. And what's happened here, um, a mite came in from Vietnam during, you know, what was it, 40 years? War started in, let's say, 60. So when we were bringing stuff back from Vietnam, we brought a parasite in. It's called the, uh, it's called the mite, you know. It's really Borrella destructor. What that mite does is that it gets in, it comes back with the, with the honeybee into the hive. It gets into the cell with the egg, and then it feeds on it, if you think of a leech. But what, what it does when it feeds on it, it's much like a mosquito that bites you and then gives you, transmits the uh, malaria to you. Okay, well what the mite does, it, it drinks the bee's blood. It's not called blood though, uh, in our fashion. It weakens the, bee, the bee's immune system and it gives it, vi it gives its viruses. So these bees here have all died as a result of the virus and the bacteria that's been transmitted to it. This year, um, that's a very flat bee. So here's a drone, and you see this drone here? So right away, if you see somebody that's pale, if I was to walk into your room as a nurse and you were really pale, what would you think? If you're a nurse or a doctor, you walk in there. The person's sick, and most likely, if you're really pale, either you don't go out in the sun, or you're, a, you're anemic, so that you don't have enough red blood cells, right? Well, this bee here did not have the equivalent of, of our red blood cells because it was fed on by that mite. Two, it, it picked up a virus from that mite. It's called the Isra Israeli, um, I forget the rest of it. Uh, but what it, it does, it, it causes the wings not to develop and they shrivel. So a bee that can't fly, what do you think is going to happen to the hive? Dead. And uh, they can't go get food. This, you know, a hive will die within two years. A new hive will die within two years unless you make changes on it. So that's what happened to this, this drone right here. And that's what the mite looks like. So does everybody understand about proportion? So this mite, if I was to make that mite as big to, to be on a human, to size it up to human scale, it would be like I had a dinner plate on my back flying around all the time. That's as that's the same thing like on that bee there. I probably didn't say that correctly. But that mite feeds off the bee and it weakens it. And uh, there can be five or six or more of these in the cell uh, with the egg and then, and then the uh, larva and then the pupa. Spreading disease. And there's just one of my queens here. I put a, put a dot on her. That's just to let me know how old she is and to help, her, help find her. And then these are all drones. You can always tell the drone, they don't look like a queen, they look like a bumblebee, except they're not black and yellow. Uh, they don't have stingers, and talk about something really cool. The only purpose of the drone in the hive is to mate with the queen. And they mate once and die. The queen mates 15 to 16 times, and a, and a queen will not mate with a drone from the same hive to prevent interbreeding and bad genes being crossed over. So they, they breed elsewhere. Um, Come wintertime, they don't need drones because they're not, there's no queens being made. 
and they're, they're not mating anything like that. So they don't need drones around, so what do you think happens? After four days, four days after birth, there's a genetic kill switch the drones can't feed themselves. They depend on the worker bees, right here, to feed them. Well, they don't need them around, so they either starve them, don't feed them, or they'll starve them and kick them out the door, or they'll chew their wings off, which I've seen, and there'll be two bees on one drone. They'll haul them off, drop them over my deck, which is about 40 or 50 feet above the ground, so they can't get back. And talk about you know enemies of bees, Yellow jackets come onto my back porch and they pick off the blue <coughs> ones. You know, they'll chew these guys right up in half and um, eat them themselves. So, um, yeah. This is a uh, feeding tray I put on my back porch. I feed the bees sugar water. <coughs> my wife thinks I'm talking to somebody. Cool. Yeah, I didn't get stuck. I'm just talking to the bees. <laughs> she thinks I'm crazy. whispering to <laughs> There's thousands of bees there. There's thousands of them. Is that neat? Yeah, not everybody's agreeing. Uh, so what do bees eat? Um, so what you see here is pollen. Different kinds of pollen. And much like we should eat a well, you know, you hear your parents talk to you about eat, eating a well-balanced meal. Not all pollen is the same. You know, not, you know, not all, you know, not all protein has the same quality of protein, right? It's the same thing with pollen, and that's why they bring back different, different types of pollen, so they get a well-balanced meal. Um, and so that's why you see the different colors. I mean, I've seen colors fuchsia, green, black you know, almost a blue. I mean, that's really neat stuff to think that this is out in nature. So bees use pollen and that's their protein source and nectar is their carbohydrate source. And they need clean water. That's why you see bees at your local pool drinking, you know, and the chlorine doesn't hurt them either. These here, these are larvae. You know, here's an egg. That's a, that's a, uh, the larva right there. So they go through a complete metamorphosis. So it goes egg. It stays an egg for the larva. And it takes 21 days to go from egg to worker bee where she's chewing out. And these are nurse bees that you see there. They are feeding them. They, they secrete royal jelly in there, which is a, uh, something that only young bees produce. Oh, yeah. Uh, this bee here is a little upset with me. See how the teeth are like this? For a bee to sting you, it has to actually act, actually has to bite you first to hang on to you, then it bends its abdomen. When you see a swarm of bees in the springtime, they're very gentle for the most part. You know, they are uh, because they are full of honey, because when they leave that hive to swarm, they fill up, and so they have a hard time bending their abdomen to sting you and how do you feel after you eat a meal? Okay. You're, you're chilling, right? You're chilling. You don't feel like attacking anybody. So it's really the same thing with bees, but this bee was on the doorstep, and she wasn't too happy. And this is a cool picture. Here's the bee's proboscis right there, the straw that uh, she drinks fluid through. That's a compound eye, a picture of the eye. That's a swarm cell. There's a queen, I just got done marking her. Here she is again. And what makes this a, a really a beautiful queen? And uh, they can be quite expensive, you know, up to five, five, six thousand dollars for for breeder queens. Um, but I, I make my own. So the reason why her abdomen is so long when you compare it to a worker bee is that she has to be able to stick her abdomen and lay that egg in the bottom of this cell right in the center. If it's anywhere else, if it's up on the wall, it's not happening because the, the worker bee will come by and secrete f food in there, and all that food goes to the bottom of the cell. If the egg's not there, it starves and it dies. So that's why she has a long abdomen. Uh, the longer they are and the fatter they are, the more money they're worth. So that's just pollen. That's just a queen again. That's a bad picture. <laughs> uh, 
Oh yeah, that's a cool spider. Uh, that's a jumping spider, actually. Yeah, pretty neat. And the biggest, the biggest black widows I found are out in Lafayette on Release Valley Road. I have some bees out there, and every year when I go out, well, I go out there normally, but I always check. I always wear gloves when I'm going into the hive because, I mean, I found some huge black widows there. But this was just a cool jumping spider. They don't do anything, uh, and they're kind of neat. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. So what eats bees? Oh, what eats bees? You know, spiders are really neat. Just think if we didn't have spiders. You know, think about all the mosquitoes and all the other insects that bother you. You know, everybody needs love. Here, there's a picture of some yellow jackets on my front porch. They are eating a drone. Um, I'll get to you in a second. With a healthy bee and a, and a healthy yellow jacket, they don't even fight. The, the yellow jackets don't even bother them. But they, much like a shark, you know, when uh, a shark can sense a fish that's not swimming regularly, you know, it's kind of struggling, that shark will home right in on it. They have a lateral line, which is like radar. They home right in. These yellow jackets can tell which bees aren't happening, and they'll go right at it, chew their head off or chew their to the abdomen off so you'll just see a thorax and a head running around. Um, it is rather brutal. Um, oh yeah, this is another cool spider. Everybody see this spider right here? This is a spider that you find on uh, artichokes. It's a ghost spider. Oh yeah, happy to look you. Happy to look you. Bad humor. Oh yeah, these are pollen grains. So the bee, you know, the bee brings in pollen, hooks it on the back of their leg, and then they put it in the cell and they pound it in with their head. You know, so that pollen never comes out of this tape. <laughs> Just a cool flower. You can see the pollen in there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So what I have here, I don't know if you want to look at it, I brought in some, uh, why don't we put it on that table over there? I brought in some bees, uh, and they're behind thick plastics, you don't have to worry about it. The queen is a, uh, is a queen from the Caucasus, it's a Carnolian queen. Uh, and what you'll see here, uh, before you all come up and check it out, what you'll see here, these are worker eggs right here. Um, I don't think I have any drones in here. Um, it's still kind of early for them right now, but these are worker cells. The queen has a pink dot, she's black. Um, these are all worker cells here. There's no, there's really no honey on this thing. And, uh, let's see if I can see here. Um, on this side here, there's something pretty cool. We talked about you know, why do bees swarm, and, and, and bees swarm in the wild in order to propagate the species, okay? After a year, the queen's egg production drops off, you know, almost 100%, so the bees sense that, so they'll, they will either supersede her, which means she's either, uh, she's either very old or a dud, or she's been wounded from, you know, either me going into the hive or something like that. But these actually have queens in them right now. And a queen still hatches out in 16 days. It takes a worker, from egg to worker bee, 21 days. And for the drone, it takes 25. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, so this queen in here, I'm going to knock her off probably tomorrow morning or, or tonight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so come on up. Uh, maybe just the first row, I think that would probably be better. Um,
my question, like, what causes the bees? You know, why is the gorilla mite so bad? The herbicides, you know, like, I'll say Roundup, if they're strained, it's fungicides. And then if you think about the gorilla mite, you know what the gorilla mite is? It's everybody here. So it'll bring HIV to these bees, you know, by biting them and feeding on them. And then the bee develops immune, immune deficiencies. You know? so that's where you get the AIDS from. So the hive is weeping, and then if it's traveling all over the place, then it becomes yes. really weak, and then the hive can die. Yes? How do you mark the screen? You know, I didn't, I, uh, 